Hi, I'm Jeff Murrow and I welcome you to True Texas History. And today we're going to do a re-examination of the life of Lorenzo de Zavala. Yeah, you, you've probably heard the name, and uh, but many people don't know much about him uh, and don't uh, appreciate uh, his statesmanship uh, and what he accomplished for Texas. Today's his birthday, by the way. Uh, he was born uh, October 3rd, 1789. Um, and uh, he was raised down in the Yucatan. Um, and from an early age, he was very involved, uh, well, I should say very outspoken uh, when it came to politics. And uh, he didn't care much for dictators and uh, dictatorial policies. and. Uh, many times his uh, outspokenness got him in jail. You know, at one point uh, he was in a Spanish dungeon for having spoken out against uh, the Spanish crown. I mean, he dared speak out. Uh, that was something that, uh, you know, got you in a lot of trouble back then. Uh, but uh, he used his time and, and made it a point of going ahead and studying things like uh, medicine and English and uh, you know, uh, De Zavala had a classical education, uh, had visited Europe. Uh, this, uh, he was definitely uh, a man for his times, you know, a man ahead of his times, actually. Um, and he impressed enough people to where in 1821, uh, he was appointed to the Cortes. Now, the Cortes is essentially... Uh, Sp it was Spain's uh, answer to the Congress, and uh, you know met there in Madrid, Spain, and uh, uh, Lorenzo represented uh, the Yucatan there, and uh, was making a name for himself. Now, uh, at one point, he had to uh, run an errand over to France and uh, on his way back from France he discovered that uh, a warrant had been issued for his arrest so uh, he never made it back to Spain he hightailed it uh, back here to North America uh, and went to Mexico and he uh, labored furiously to uh, put people in power that uh, were not going to be uh, tyrannical that respected the, the rights of people and didn't Trump all over them. And uh, back in those early days where uh, there was a lot of turmoil as the Mexican leaders were trying to throw off the Spanish yoke, he uh, joined up with people, uh, including good old uh, Santa Ana. You know, at, at one point, Santa Ana was seen as a good guy. Uh, you know, he was a soldier for the Spanish. You know, of course, I talked about him. Uh, his involvement with the Gutierrez McGee expedition and locking people up there in San Antonio. But uh, when he was down in Mexico, he uh, was instrumental in um, some of the struggles for uh, Mexican independence. And uh, right there with him was uh, Lorenzo de Zavala. And so de Zavala knew Santa Ana. He knew how he thought. Uh, he knew what kind of man he was. Now, uh, is, and they went through, uh, you know, the uprising and downfall of people like Bustamante and a few others. Uh, I'm not going to get bogged down in that today, but um, suffice to say, he and Santa Ana remained buds uh, for a while. And uh, actually, when uh, Santa Ana uh, was finally uh, made president. He appointed Lorenzo de Zavala his uh, emissary to France. And uh, that's what kind of regard he had for him. And uh, Lorenzo uh, went ahead and went to Paris. And uh, then things went south, <laughs> shall we say. Um, and uh, that, that was in 1833, and when he heard that uh, Santa Anna 
uh, had done away with the Constitution of 1824, which I talked about. Uh, he knew that there was trouble, and so he headed uh, back to North America. In this case, he headed for Texas. He didn't head back to the Yucatan, didn't head back to uh, central Mexico. Uh, because the other thing is that uh, Santa Ana had essentially, you know, with uh, Lorenzo de Zavala leaving office, he had uh, essentially put a price on his head. He was a wanted man at that point. And uh, he had already uh, joined some of the impresarios uh, in uh, helping to settle. And in fact, uh, Lorenzo de Zavala had a place over on uh, Buffalo Bayou uh, near where the San Jacinto River is. And uh, he worked with uh, one of the other impresarios bringing in people and settling them there. Uh, so that was his home base for a while uh, during the early days of uh, the Texas Revolution. He uh, helped organize. He brought some statesmanship uh, to the young republic that we didn't have. Because keep in mind, I mean, who do we have? You have Stephen F. Austin, who's a lawyer. Uh, you got Lorenzo de Zavala, who's a statesman, has served in uh, the congresses of uh, a couple of nations, spoke many different languages. Uh, he was a class act all the way. Uh, and then you have Sam Houston, you know, uh, the guy was either uh, drunk half the time hanging out with the Indians or uh, you know his old buddy Andrew Jackson um, and you know Houston didn't inspire leadership you know when it came time for uh, when they were drafting you know, you know some of the Declaration of Independence and so forth uh, his own home county didn't even uh, want to elect Houston it was another county that elected him but uh, back to Lorenzo de Zavala. De Zavala, uh, since he had known Santa Ana, now uh, he considered Santa Ana his arch enemy. And the two uh, didn't like each other because, you know, in uh, 1835, 1836, when things started going down, uh, not only did De Zavala have a price on his head, many other Texans had prices on their heads too. And so uh, there was a lot at stake. Uh, when he was very involved with writing our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. Now, some of you may say, uh, well, all they did was just basically copy the American. No, they didn't. Uh, they had to compose it to address the unique needs of Texas and the unique needs of uh, defining uh, a republic. And Lorenzo de Zavala was one of those that uh, was very instrumental. You know, and when he uh, putting his name on it was essentially uh, the equivalent of signing his death warrant. Now, uh, when they were putting together the Constitution declaring independence there uh, at Washington on the Brazos, one of my favorite incidents of, of Texas history in quotes and it involves Lorenzo de Zavala. Uh, they were in the midst of uh, some discussions and de Zavala stood up and started talking about some Roman precedents, you know, because being that he was classically educated, he, he knew that stuff cold. And Thomas J. Russ said, uh, right now, we need to be more concerned with live Mexicans than dead Romans. I always loved that story. And um, that shut De Lorenzo up for a moment. But uh, De Lorenzo uh, ended up on the ticket with Sam Houston. He was our first vice president. Um, now, in the days uh, after San Jacinto, uh, we saw some of his compassion in the sense that uh, he gave up his home, uh, given a strategic location there, to, so that uh, the soldiers could use it as a hospital and they could tend to the wounds uh, the soldiers uh, received in the fighting and he and his family literally camped on their land uh, while other people were living in their home uh, that says something to me that's somebody that uh, you know his, his uh, life is on the line he's willing to give up uh, not just talk about uh, putting everything he has in independence he put it on the line that was the kind of man Lorenzo de Zavala was um, now he he 
developed some health problems, uh, and so he resigned from vice president, and, and uh, Lamar took over. Uh, the health problems seemed to stem from uh, some pneumonia he contracted. He was uh, crossing the river with his three-year-old son, and the boat capsized. And, um, of course, he uh, scrambled to go ahead and get his son, uh, and he put his son uh, on top of uh, the canoe and uh, kind of guided the boat to shore. Uh, but the whole episode, and, and being in the water as long as he was, it led to him to developing some pneumonia, which he eventually died of. Uh, but Lorenzo de Zavala was always putting other people first, and uh, he's definitely uh, a hero. You know, during these days when people are tearing down statues, we need heroes. We need to remember these people from the past because they give examples. Uh, modern culture, you're not, you're not going to see uh, statues to some of the musicians and sports figures. I don't see them having the kind of humanitarian qualities that Lorenzo de Zavala and the people back then had. Uh, but Lorenzo, you know, his name gets talked about a lot, but very few people uh, know about him. And I, that's why I wanted to go ahead and just touch on a few things uh, about Lorenzo de Zavala uh, in honor of his birthday. Uh, here's to you, Lorenzo. We miss you. And... Um, Let's hope he's not rolling over in his grave these days. But anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, shout out to Jonathan Perez. Good to see you. And uh, until next time, this is Jeff Murrah wishing you well. Vaya con Dios.